Well, good morning, my friends. Cindy Eriks here, again with Robert Henderson's 365 Prayers and Activations for Entering the Courts of Heaven. I hope you are well today. Today is Sunday, May the 26th, 2024. And the, uh, the title for Robert's devotion today is called The Lifting of the Veil. And he quotes uh, two scriptures, but the one that he writes out completely is from 2 Corinthians 3, 14 through 16. And this is how it reads. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same evil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away by Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Amen. I love that. I just love that. When we turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Our eyes are open. We can see. So this is what Robert has to say about that today. Paul is teaching the Corinthians, that the Jews could not really see what God was communicating through the Old Testament and the law. They could not see that it was a shadow of the good things to come. However, when we see who Jesus is as the Christ, the Old Testament makes sense and becomes relative to our day. Yes, even today. As David declares in Psalm 119 and 18, which reads, Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. Yeah, there are wondrous things from his law. David was aware that there were secrets, there were truths, there were ideas that were concealed in the law of God. It wasn't just a lot of do's and don'ts. We've talked about that before. It was filled with the revelation of his heart, God's heart, his passion, his desire for us, which are all good things, which are all good things he desires for us. His cry was for the veil to be taken away, that we might see past what was legalistic and into the life of God contained in his commandments. I've said so many times before, they're just not rules and regulations. Yeah. Once we receive Christ in our hearts, fully, completely, we surrender to him. Those things we want to do naturally because we want he wants. We want everything that he wants. We love everything he loves. We hate everything he hates. My ad, my added words many times now so far. There are still things to be revealed to us. So that we might come into the spirit of knowledge that frees us from oppression and control of the devil and his religious order. Jesus' heart is that we be free. Hear that again. Jesus' heart is that we, we, all people in the whole wide world, be free, not oppressed. So this is Robert's prayer today. Lord, as I stand before your courts, I ask that you would open my eyes to behold the wondrous things from your law. May I gain knowledge through your spirit of knowledge, that I might walk in the revelation of who you are and your ways. Thank you, Lord, for unlocking these realms. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I'm so thankful for his word today. Aren't you? It's a guidebook to life. You know, I was listening to a watching while I was at the gym yesterday, basically. I was watching a video from uh, Mario Morello. Uh, he had a tent meeting. I think it was Arizona. I'm not 100% sure, but it was out west. And, uh, you know, he just, um, God, God just want. he just hit it. He hit it. He, he just so hit it home. God wants nothing but good for us not nothing but good 
and 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 and, and he can be so misunderstood sometimes. And uh, evil's going to always want at us. That dark spirit world's going to always want at us. But um, you know, our eyes just need to be opened. And I, that'd be my prayer today, Lord. Open my eyes to everything, God, in Your Word, God. Oh, that was the other thing that Mario said. That's what I was. I had kind of forgot what, I, what, what what it was about what Mario had said. So I just um, he was talking about his encounter with a professor at Berkeley many years ago when he was young, when he was a young um, student, basically. But he was. He, I don't know if he was a preacher yet or not, but. He either was just a pre, just became a preacher, or um, he was heading in that direction, right? And he was at Berkeley. He had a, I know he had a ministry at Berkeley during um, the Jesus movement in 1970. But anyway, he um, the, there was a there was a literary professor there that um, had written many many books. He was well published uh, author. Um, I'm not sure the subject. It might have been social science. I'm not not 100 percent sure. But anyway, he challenged uh, Mario to a uh, debate, and so Mario he did not prepare for. It. He said, "Lord, just tell me what to say, basically." And when he got on that stage after uh, after this professor counted all these books that he had written, you know, and just especially was right. Uh, Mario was like he he didn't know till the last second what he was going to say. You ought to go back and look at that video. It's recent. On YouTube anyway he says uh, one of the things he said in there and he didn't say much and he got I mean he was saying Lord tell me what to say but the Bible is the you know it's it's it's, it's the it's the longest um, longest um, like best-selling book that there is I mean it's like it's been a best-selling book since it's been written okay and so, you know, Mario brought up the fact that, you know, is your book, are your books, the books that you've written, are they going to go on forever and ever and ever? And it is, and there's a reason for it. And so I remember my brother-in-law asking me one time, like, why do you read the Bible and keep reading the Bible, even though you've read through it already, right? I said, well, you know, you learn something, like the Lord shows you something different. You know, me, I'm like 20, 22 years or so into receiving Jesus fully and completely as my Lord and Savior. And man, he is showing me things in scriptures I have read that I didn't see before. And, and I think it has, has to do with maturity and our ability to receive it at that point in time. So to seek his word, uh, his word will speak to you. It is alive. His word is alive. If I can say nothing more. So this would be my prayer today. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is true. Thank you that your word is alive, that you are alive, and you are alive in us, and that your Holy Spirit is constantly guiding us and showing us and teaching us and um, giving us those morsels as we need them and feeding us and feeding our spirits. We thank you, Lord, for that. I pray that you would guide us today in everything we do, say, think, speak, and I thank you that your word is true, that your word is real, that it's your word isn't just a bunch of laws and rules and regulations, and I thank you, Lord, that I totally despise and hate what you hate, and I love what you love, and teach me how to do that more, because I know I'm not very good at it, and I want to be better at it. loving it everything you love and every person that you love thank you for this beautiful day god i thank you for the fragrance of the gardens right now and the roses i just um, clipped for inside the house today they will fill the house with beautiful fragrant fragrances lord from your creation thank you for the birds that i can hear just falling around talking to each other in the background god Thank you for the sunshine, Lord, and thank you for the rain. But today it is sunny. We will we'll rejoice. We'll rejoice in the sunshine. We'll rejoice in the rain. Just show us your will today, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So I pray that uh, if you uh, happen to see this early on, if it gets uploaded quick enough, which I'm going to try to do before I go to church here in Ocean Township, New Jersey, um, I'm attending Glad Tidings Church. 
um, Tinton Falls, which is right up the street. And uh, it's a wonderful, loving church with the Word. Um, all of the Word taught. And Capital City Church in Tallahassee at 862 Blentstown Street in Tallahassee, where all of the Word is taught. And so if you are just seeing this right away before church, um, Tinton Falls Church, Glad Tidings, is at 1030. And the Tallahassee is uh, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Oh, no, it's not. It's 10 o'clock today because it's Memorial Day weekend. Take that back. Most of the time, it's 9 and, and, and 11, but today it's 10 o'clock because of the holiday weekend. So I, I pray you have a really good holiday weekend that we remember fallen soldiers and uh, remember all those who had served. Both my parents served in World War II and uh, my mother in the Navy and my father in the Army. And uh, that, we, that, we do, that we do think on and we honor we honor those who served us in this great nation to defend our freedom. But I pray that you will receive the freedom in Christ today if you haven't already. I love you, but you know he loves you so much more.